When you invite people into this country from the Middle East, they bring with them their traditions, their cultures and their ways. OK, now that's not really compatible with our way. However, we're told to put up and shut up. Otherwise, you're racist. This elderly, elderly poppy seller describes the moment pro-Palestinian uh, protesters punched and kicked him. Now, this is a man who served this country in Northern Ireland. Veteran Jim Henderson says he was set upon while selling remembrance poppies in Waverley Station in Edinburgh. Um, I don't know if that's the picture of him. Poppy seller was caught up in a pro-Palestine rally. He said he was punched and kicked by protesters. Veteran Jim Henderson, 78, 78 years old, right? And these are youths, or at least people that are at least half his age or less, right? Says he was set upon while selling remembrance poppies at Waverley Station in Edinburgh. Footage shared on social media appears to show Mr. Henderson, who served in Northern Ireland, trying to get away from the crowd. His ordeal was ended when station staff intervened, shoving protesters out of the way, and there was more than a 1,000 of them that descended on the station. He said he was basically getting shoved back and forward, and he thought he was going to go down, and he wanted to try and collect the money, that obviously, for the poppies that had been sold. And it was ladies that came to his, um, his aid and helped him. What I find interesting is, have a little listen to this, because they're, they're talking about, well, have a listen, it should play... One minute. And if you can't hear what they're saying is ceasefire now. They're calling for an end to the slaughter. They want peace, okay? And how do they best demonstrate how they want peace? By beating up a 78-year-old man who couldn't defend himself because he's at the end of his life and not as fit as he was. Now, I'd like to have seen them have a go at him when he was at his prime because he probably would have ended them, all right? But that's the sort of cowardly bastards that they are. Parading behind, you know, ceasefire this and peace that. It's not about that at all. These little packs of hyena are nothing more than a show of force. And the worst of it is, into that would probably be some young, middle-class, delusional, extreme left-wing wankers that would have attacked him because in their head, anybody who served in the military in the UK is scum, is evil, is a baby killer, or is this, or is that. You know, these people, they signed up to serve their country, and where they were sent wasn't their choice, and what they were told to do wasn't their choice. I mean, let's be honest, back in the First World War, if you didn't do what you were told, you got shot at dawn, and many people were shell shot were. These people, they went out and they did what they were told, and they served this country. Where the conflict was and what it was about is none of their business. They were told to do what they would do, and that was it. Now, what I believe is that in the Middle East, they discipline their people somewhat differently. And I truly believe that if it works over there, then maybe we should adopt it over here. So that station, once these pal uh, protesters have been sent away, should have some sort of thing set up to flog these bastards that did this to him publicly. And let's all watch. And let's see how much these little liberals, these white liberals, or these other feral people from wherever it is, let's see how much they feel passionate about beating up on old people then when that's the end result. When they get publicly flogged in front of spectators jeering at them. Let's see how they like those apples. Because I put money on they won't. This is going to get worse. Mark my words. And you have to protect yourself, by the way, people. These people are bullies. They enjoy ganging up on lone people. Now, there are going to be people from that side of things that are going to say, what about the Brits that have done this, there, and the other? I don't fucking care. You're in my country now. I care what you do in my country. Because to be quite frank, we didn't invite you. It was the politicians that did, and they didn't serve us. So you're the unwelcome neighbour. You're the ones that perhaps, and this isn't all of you, because there have been some really sound ones come over. But generally speaking, this is shit we could have done without. Now, I understand that what we have done over in the Middle East in the past has probably caused this. But yet again, these were our politicians who didn't consult us, who didn't ask, who sent us into these wars, like the weapons of mass destruction, which incidentally, two million people went out in the street to protest against. That should tell you that we didn't want it. But however, yet again, 
regardless of what the people wanted. They sent us into conflicts. And now we're going to have even more of them come over. Because there's people now that are fleeing Gaza that have been told that we're going to welcome them with open arms. Oh, that's just what we need. More people from a country that has no connection to us in, in the way we live, that has a totally different religion. And let's be honest, half of the people that come over here are going to fucking well hate us. Oh, that's an accident. Well, how could that go possibly wrong? Oh, don't worry. The moment they touch British soil, they'll assimilate, they'll change, and they'll become all lovey, happy-dovey, whatever. Because let's be honest, if they have been in a war zone, they won't have PTSD, will they? Or any other problems with them. They're not going to have a chip on their shoulder about who caused this, who didn't stop this. This will not end well. Just saying. Anyway, more content to come. I'll see you in a bit.